Good morning, everyone. I'm up in these beautiful, beautiful mountains right now, photographing the sunrise. I camped up here last night, and I've just had an amazing time. I'm gonna be up here looking for whatever wildlife I can find today, but as the sun was rising, I noticed these beautiful colors out on these layered mountains back here, so I thought I'd get some pictures. You know, usually in my weekly videos, I like to focus on looking for and finding and photographing a specific species. This week's video is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, in previous videos, I've talked about backgrounds before and things that you can do to improve your backgrounds in your wildlife photography or nature photography in general. And uh, generally, when I talk about backgrounds, I just give a whole bunch of different tips and whatnot. Uh, this week's video, I wanted to talk about backgrounds again, but I wanted to get very, very specific and talk about how to improve your backgrounds and your wildlife and nature photography by adding a specific color into them. This is one of my favorite colors to add into my photography, and I'll go over a few different examples of things that you can do, uh, methods that you can use to incorporate this color into your backgrounds, a few of the things that I do specifically, and how I feel like it really improves uh, wildlife photography and nature photography in general. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Throughout this video, I'll be using some actual examples from pictures that I've taken, uh, wildlife that I've encountered, and how I've incorporated this color into the backgrounds of those photos. The color that I wanted to talk about today is the color blue. It's one of my favorite, favorite colors to add into my photography whenever I can. And again, I'll be going through some specific examples of how to add that color into your photography. You know, blue is all around us in nature. Uh, we talk about the blue mountains, which aren't actually blue, but gray and brown and green. Uh, we talk about, you know, blue water, which is actually clear. Uh, there's the blue sky, which more often than not is actually looking like a white color, so, you know. Anyways, there's a lot of blue around us. Uh, we just have to know how to be able to pick that color out from our surroundings and be able to utilize it within our photography. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. First, let's start off with blue mountains. So I'm out here this morning, sun's coming up, and I'm photographing these layered mountains here and they're looking very blue in my pictures even though as you can see behind me the sun's coming up here and those mountains look more of a brown or a, you know gray green all these mixtures of colors that they have they don't look that blue so what can you do to uh, make the mountains look blue uh, it really all it comes down to is your light and distance from them so these mountains that I'm photographing out here, they're quite far away and uh, the light hasn't hit them yet. The sun's coming up behind them so the light hasn't hit that face that I'm photographing yet, which gives them a very blue appearance. Uh, once that light hits the mountains, it really accentuates any uh, colors, the true colors of those mountains. It accentuates a lot of the textures in the mountains. But right now, photographing these ones, uh, the light hasn't hit them yet, so those uh, rigid lines of the mountains, they're just kind of smoothed out, and because the direct light hasn't hit them yet, they're looking very blue. So that's one thing that you can do in your photography uh, to use as a background if you've got wildlife in front, or if you're just doing nature photography in general. Uh, you can look for mountains that are, again, somewhat far away, and uh, where the light's not directly shining on them and you can you can very easily get that blue tone those blue colors in your photography and it really makes an amazing background for wildlife photography again if you can get your wildlife in the foreground and those mountains in the background like i'm talking about you can get some amazing results you know i'm up here in these mountains right now looking for whatever wildlife I can find and I've been able to use mountains as a background for a lot of different species. I've been able to use them for bears, I've been able to use them for mountain goats, for deer, you know, so many different species and the results are just wonderful. I love them. One of my favorite examples of using the mountains was out on the Alaskan tundra. 
uh, I had just weathered this storm. It was like this 16 hour storm. It was raining, it was super overcast and it finally broke and I went out onto the, the tundra and found some bears to photograph and I found one in particular. He looked especially happy that the storm had broken and uh, the sun started shining a little bit on him but the mountains in the background were still um, shadowed by the, the rain clouds and so I got this extremely vibrant blue color in the background but the bear in the foreground was also just very well lit up and it made for this amazing scene and those are some of my favorite bear pictures that I've ever taken just the extreme vibrance of the blues in the backgrounds that I got were absolutely amazing the next thing that I want to talk about is using water to incorporate a lot of blue into your photographs. You know, whenever I sit down and color pictures with my son, uh, anytime we're drying water, or coloring water, we always color it in with blue. But then when you go to the sink and get a cup of water to drink, it's not blue at all, it's clear. So why do we associate water with the color blue? Well, water is an extremely good reflective surface. So anytime I'm out photographing wildlife and I've got water to work with, a lot of it comes down to uh, how overcast it is and where you are um, in relation to the sun. So water being the great re reflective surface that it is, uh, if I'm here, I've got water in front of me, that water is going to reflect the color of whatever is behind it. So whenever I'm photographing wildlife with water or nature with water in it, I always look for where the sky is the bluest and I try to get that blue sky with the sun behind me if possible. So again, if I'm out photographing sea otters on my kayak, I'll position my kayak in a spot where the sun, I try to get that behind me and if possible, I'll try to get blue sky in front of me with the sea otter or bird or whatever it is in between and if you can get that blue sky again behind with the water and your subject in the middle and the sun behind you can get some intense blue colors uh, sea otters are some of my favorite animals to photograph and i go out quite frequently with a kayak to photograph them and i've noticed on days where it's just kind of overcast and there's not a lot of uh, sunny sky to work with or blue sky to work with. I like those colors but the water turns out to be more of a gray or more of a silver color which again is pretty but I love those vibrant blues. So anytime I'm going out in that kayak I try to catch the uh, weather forecast beforehand and make sure that I'm going out on a day where I'm going to have sunny skies to work with because again if you can get those blue skies with the sun behind you that sun really makes those colors pop. Uh, just these extremely vibrant blue colors that you can get. And getting those sea otters or the birds in the water with just those vivid blues, there's nothing compares to it. It is so pretty. So that's another thing that I recommend that you do when going out to photograph animals with water around or nature with water around. Check the forecast, make sure you're gonna have some blue skies to work with and try to get that sun behind you if you can because again, that really just makes those colors pop. The next way to incorporate some blue into your images that I wanted to talk about is by using the sky as a background. Go outside on a really sunny day and look all over in the sky and you'll notice that there's different shades of blue all around. If you look towards the horizon, you're going to have one shade of blue. If you look further up into the sky, there's going to be another shade of blue. If you put the sun to your back and look at the sky opposite, there's going to be another shade of blue. So that's one thing that I really like to incorporate into my images to really add some blue and some color into my images when I can. A tool that I really like to carry with me if I'm going to be photographing the sky is called a circular polarizer. It's a really small filter that you can carry on your camera or carry with you and attach onto your camera lens that you can use to really make the blues in the sky pop. Uh, what a polarizer does is it cuts reflective light out of your image. So if you're photographing vegetation, uh, water, the sky, like I mentioned, it's really going to make a lot of those uh, blues in your image just really pop. So it's something really simple that you can carry with you and use in your photography. 
If you don't have a circular polarizer, no worries. You don't absolutely need one for photography. Uh, there's other methods, other things that you can do to really get those colors to pop. Again, like I say, go outside on a sunny day if you're photographing a subject and look around you in the sky and see where the bluest portions of the sky are and try to get that as your background. A lot of times that's going to be with the sun behind you, kind of like the water that I talked about, sun behind you and your subject in the middle and the blue sky uh, behind and you can really get some amazing blues and so that's another thing that you can do to really incorporate those blues into your images. As wildlife and nature photographers sometimes we may feel like we're totally subject to the conditions around us. While the conditions around us do contribute heavily to the overall outcome of our images, we can actually use those conditions around us to help us be more creative and help us create more compelling images to look at. Once I was out in the desert photographing some desert kit foxes, some of my favorite species to photograph. Now these foxes, they generally live in these areas that have a lot of yellows, a lot of browns, a lot of reds and grays. Uh, a lot of these colors that they blend into very well. I was out photographing these kit foxes one day and I noticed some conditions uh, that were developing that would allow me to incorporate some blues into the images. And by using some of these techniques that I've talked about, some of these methods that I've talked about today, I was able to get some of my favorite kit fox images that I've ever taken. Over all the years that I photographed them, I've got a lot of images of these foxes, again in these yellows and these browns and these reds, but I hadn't had any images of them with these blues, and I was able to get these images with these kit foxes with an extremely blue background, again using these techniques that I've talked about. So again, we can analyze the conditions that we have to work with, and we can create more compelling images to look at Rather than letting the conditions determine the outcome of my photo, I looked at the conditions that I had to work with and I determined the outcome of my photo. I hope these tips and techniques will help you in your own photography, help you to incorporate more colors into your images, and help you to just create more compelling images to look at. We have so many colors out there as wildlife and nature photographers to work with. We just need to know what conditions are necessary to create those colors out in nature. We can then plan ahead on our trips, on our photo shoots. We can position ourselves in the right spots to be able to incorporate those colors into our images and make those compelling images to look at. I would love to hear from you guys. What colors do you enjoy seeing in a wildlife or a nature image? And how do you incorporate those colors into your images? How do you compose your images to incorporate those colors as you're photographing a subject? I would love to hear from you guys. The sun's come up, if you couldn't tell. I'm gonna go find, hopefully, some wildlife to photograph and hopefully incorporate some of these colors into those images as I photograph them. Have a wonderful week, you guys. Thank you so much for following along. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.
I hope this week's video has been helpful. Every time I talk, this bird starts, starts doing that. <laughs>